just yelled in the street, Trump 2024. What makes you love Donald Trump? If you're truly a patriotic American, how could you not love Donald Trump? If you actually are somebody that does your research and your due diligence, as opposed to being pushed by somebody else's propagandist talking points, how could you hate Donald Trump? He's the most popular businessman in American history. If you wanted a movie to be popular throughout all of before 2016, who has the most cameos? I find it funny that as soon as he became a Republican, he became racist. But name me that racist that won an NAACP award. I'll wait. Didn't we have peace around the world when Trump was in office? Why are we in war right now? Oh, and for that daggone bill y'all want to keep talking about about the border? Well, y'all were okay with the administration giving 60 billion to um, Ukraine so they can put 1,500 at the border. Here's something else deeper for you to think about. Didn't they leave millions and millions of guns in Afghanistan unguarded and unattended and left the country directly after that Xi Jinping and Putin came down and gave them legitimacy? Well, what, what happens after that? Oh, didn't Biden give Putin access to a gas pipeline? And then directly after that, he went to war with Ukraine? And then was it a coincidence that one of our basketball stars got locked up in Russia and we traded her for Victor Boot? So we traded the Lord of War for Brittany Griner with a whole bunch of unattended guns in Afghanistan. That's what you voted for. That's better than Trump. You need to wake up, bro. <laughs> Good morning, Owasso. This is the Twins with Owasso Live, and this is the Morning Loop. I couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, I'm assuming we got the, the edited version of this video, but I'm sure that guy was saying he would never vote for Donald Trump that he was looking at and kind of addressing in that video. So, but yeah, what a, what a great summary. What a great analysis of what's going on. Again, if you understand what's going on and you're not a partisan hack, you understand that Donald Trump did really good stuff while he was in office. You understand that the world was in a better place. You know, you have all these people come in and go, no, that's because of Barack Obama. He inherited a better economy. Barack Obama had a very slow recovering economy. Again, it's like FDR. Like, FDR halted the progress of recovery with a lot of his bills that he passed. Same with Barack Obama. He halted the progress of the recovery with a lot of his horrible bills he passed. So, Trump came in, undid a lot of legislation, freed up people to do business, and that's what causes prosperity, is whenever you allow people to make their own decisions. Isn't it amazing whenever you let people do what they need to do in order to make their businesses work that they can, pro they can prosper? If you deregulate and you let people do the things that they can do to be successful, you remove barriers for people. That way, not only the already rich, wealthy companies that are already in function can work, but people can compete with them. It's pretty cool. You remove those barriers to entry, you deregulate, and people are able to compete. People are able to give big businesses a run for their money. Because there's a big problem with big businesses because they have to overregulate everything. They have too many people. They have HR departments. Again, what's going to be the death of major companies in the, in the country? HR departments. People suing me like, I don't think I'm getting my fair share. And you have upcoming businesses who are like competing. And you have people who are hyper-motivated, hyper-focused going, we're going to out-compete them with our product. Because we're all on a mission. We're all on a go. We're not, we don't care about diversity, equity, and inclusion. We care about out-competing this company. Is where these giant companies are like, crap, we have another lawsuit we have to deal with. We have another HR fiasco. That's the reason that uh, the economy was on fire whenever Donald Trump was around. Because we didn't focus on dumb crap like DEI. We didn't focus on dumb crap like that. So, anyway. Uh, today's topics, hurricanes, illegals, and Israel... Oh my. Uh, it's just kind of been a, uh, I was just kind of doom scroll in the last couple of days and I just kind of, everything that I saw was just kind of, that there was not one topic that we want to talk about so we're just going to kind of go over all three. So we'll just kind of, it's, today will be more like a meme review day than really anything but there'll be some serious topics in here as well. So uh, we'll just let Chad start pulling up these videos and we'll just start going from here. But uh, this made me laugh. Oh my gosh, this this little meme Chad has pulled up underneath me here. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's Trump holding up McDonald's for those are <laughs> yeah. so where he's been it, shot and he's raising his fist in the air after. Yeah, he's saying fight, fight, fight after mm. he gets shot. But look, even the Secret Service members are smiling, smiling in this photo. Yeah. Like everything about this photo, the more I looked at it, the funnier yeah. it got. Yeah. So golly. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So everyone's yeah. saying it's McDonald Trump now. <laughs> McDonald Trump. I love it. So, man. But yeah, he's got a happy meal. They're all smiling. <laughs> <laughs> this fist of the fine. Victorious. Uh, this is why he's winning. This is why he's winning the internet or the meme wars. Again yes. Right now. Absolutely. Just it's so funny. It's so funny. Mm-hmm. But then there's also this one that you sent me, which this one I find absolutely. Yeah, hilarious. this one's perfect. Again, this sums up the argument between liberals and conservatives on the border crisis i mean just read it chad just let us yeah it's the chad meme versus the mpc and they're sitting at a voter booth and then the chad says illegal immigrants might vote and then the npc is like no only citizens can vote he goes then then the chad's like then voters should prove that they are citizens npc a npc is like no that's racist and that's exactly how this works. Hey, I think illegal immigrants might be voting. No, only citizens can vote. And then we're like, okay, well then let's have proof of citizenship so where anybody can vote or when you go to sign up to vote or whatever. Yeah, again. No, that's racist. Uh, certain people, certain groups can't bring IDs. They don't know how to get IDs. Again, no critical thought from people on the left. It's like, oh, no, it's, I mean, but again, they don't care. They only care about power. It doesn't matter if illegals vote as long as they're... Because they know illegals will be voting for the people that they want in power. So whenever we try to put roadblocks and barriers to entry, being like, hey, you have to prove that you're a citizen. Not only that, again, there was a watchdog group that I actually think I have a video sent you today of like a watchdog group that has that proves people's uh, landowner status and their, uh, their, their tax records to prove that they have to vote. So that, that'd be cool if we had to do something like that. It's like, oh, yeah, you have to prove where you've lived for the past two or three years. Because what they're apparently what they're saying is the legals are just putting their uh, these NGOs as their home address, the NGOs yeah, that are getting them there. I did watch I did watch that one and that is in here. I just got to find it. Okay, got, you sent so many. I there's a million things I have all queued up ready to yeah. go. <laughs> go ahead, keep going, keep going. Yeah, next one you have here is a carbon footprint of homegrown food five times greater than those grown conventionally. The study found individual gardening infrastructures responsible for increase of CO2 levels. Wow. I'm a journalism. And it's the, you know, it's the kid, I forget the guy's name, but it's the cops, the dumb, the dumb cop's mm -hmm. son. And he's like, I'm a journalism. <sighs> there you go, folks. Again, it's like they don't want you to be self-sufficient. They don't want you to know how to grow your own food. It's like we want you, again, Democrats, they want you dependent on them. They want you dependent on the government. How crazy is that? How sad is that? It's just pathetic, man. It makes me sick. It makes me sick that, you know, like somebody could put an article out there and be like, how could you having a garden in your backyard cause five times more emissions than a tractor from an industrial farming complex run by like Bill Gates be putting out, how could you and your little acre of land be putting out a hundred times more carbon emissions than Bill Gates? It's ridiculous. It's, it's, it is literally retarded. It is the stupidest thing that's ever been said. Mm -hmm. Like that article, I mean, it's so brain dead, such a dumb take that, I mean, the fact that people take journalists seriously, that, I mean, you should just laugh at that. Anybody, if, if you ever introduce to someone who identifies as a journalist, you should just be like, oh, I'm sorry, when did you find out you're retarded? <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously. This is why journalists are the enemy of the people. The, yeah. The media is the enemy of the people because all they are is a mouthpiece for, I swear at this point, it really is the democratic machine. Besides <laughs> Fox News and a bunch of independent journalists, it's ridiculous. I mean, Matt Taibbi has proved this time and time again because mm -hmm. he was one of these mainstream journalists, and he writes that one article that goes, hey, there's some really shady stuff going, going on, on in journalism, in journalism and uh, they all turn on him, and he's a pariah of the mainstream journalist, you know, mainstream yeah. media journalism network. How dare you call us out? But yeah, it's just ridiculous. Keep going, man. Well, I found that video that you were talking about. Oh, yeah, about. yeah, go for it. There it is right here. And for those of you watching, I'll read it before I start the video. It says, election crime researcher Stephen Baldwin confirms swing states are, cho are chock full of illegal aliens. They are preparing for another big steal. Now, 
That is just what this says. You can take whether this you believe this guy or not. Mm-hmm. But everything that he's saying sounds legit. And two, everyone's like, illegal immigrants can't vote. Well, if they've been given amnesty, they're not illegal immigrants anymore, despite the fact that conservatives don't see it that way. Mm-hmm. That's the problem is just like, make them citizens. Well, if you take a person who's illegally crossed the border and you go, we're just going to give them amnesty right now. They're now officially a citizen of the state, or at least a resident, which allows you permission to vote in our elections. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Research in voter fraud on and off for decades, and I'm in touch with a whole network of attorneys who work on voter fraud issues. And what we have found is that some of the voter rolls in the swing states are chock full of illegal aliens and other people who should not be on the voter roll. But we know there are illegal aliens on the voting rolls because they register their address as the processing center. All these NGOs that are processing them, even before they cross the border, they're using the address of the processing center as their voter registration address. I guess they think Republicans are too stupid to notice. But we have software where we integrate the property tax records with the voting file, and so we can see where every voter actually lives. They they have to live at a legal residence, and many do not, by the thousands. And all these new illegal voters are inundating um, the uh, voting rolls, and especially the swing states. They are preparing for another big steal. And research and voter fraud on and off for decades. It did. It just restarted. But yeah, that's it. There you go, folks. I mean, take it for what you will. I'm sure people on the left will just be like, this guy is not to be trusted. You know what I mean? Again, it's just a sad state of affairs. It goes back to that meme. I mean, pull back up that meme that you just showed, the the Chad meme. I mean, that is exactly what we're going to go through in this election. Illegal immigrants might vote. No, it's illegal immigrants don't vote. Well, then we should be able to fortify voter IDs and be able to prove that people have to be citizens in order to vote. No, that's racist. That's where we're at. Right there. So it's just disgusting. But yeah, I mean, just be prepared, folks. I mean, it's it's not a it's not a guaranteed victory, despite the fact that all the polling data shows that Donald Trump is absolutely crushing it. But it's it's not a guaranteed thing. So remember, 10 million illegals came. And they they bust them all over the country. So it's that's scary. And the fact that, you know, these people could just be, you know, bust to a boating station and be like, hey. I have an address, and then, you know, you'll have these crappy pollsters who are all Democrats and be like, oh, wow, the last 40 people all have the same address listed as their home address. I guess they all live in the same apartment building. It's like, no, they're they're listing the NGO as their home address. Mm-hmm. Then, related to still immigration, here is a girl speaking out against the migrant crisis inside a high school. So yes, oh, they said we were trying to play this one yesterday, but we kind of ran out of time. But this is completely for all those people that are like there. There's nothing bad happening from the taking Haitians. in asylum seekers, these Haitian asylum seekers. Well, here is some stuff that's going on. These are unforeseen consequences. You know, do, do we need to help the world? Yes, but we should help them where they're at, not just bring them into the United States. Yeah, let's just bring in more problems into the U.S. instead of fixing the problems we already have here. Yep. But here we go. So. I'll go ahead and play this, but again, it says, for those of you just listening, the little caption of this video is, Girl in Springfield, Ohio, speaks out against migrant crisis inside high school. Every single classroom, no white people, no no nothing. It was just Haitians. What percentage of students at your high school would you say are migrants that have recently came into the United States? I would say about, like, I don't even know, like 50% of the schools, or maybe a little bit more, are are Haitians. They're filling the classrooms up, and we don't have the translators to help the teachers, and they're just really disrespectful. I mean, the footage got taken down, but mm-hmm. before Christmas break, the two ha- there's two Haitians got caught getting in the stairway at school yes at school there was video there was video another thing the age limit to go to school is 21 yeah and there'd be 21 year olds in freshman classes oh yeah holy cow yeah that's not okay that's not okay because so i'm not saying all of them but some of them most some of my friends have literally guided got violated by them and harassed so their 21 year olds are inside the high schools yes 
yes, it's it's not okay. The top floor, the classes would literally be filled with Haitians. There you go. Every That's single class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have 20 to 21 year old Haitians going to school with 16 and 18 year olds. Yeah. Guys, is that great that they're trying to learn English and to assimilate? Yes. But the fact that they're going to high school and not some type of night classes or mm -hmm. some sort of like community college course, why are they sending them to these very, very small towns just to be workers at plants and or whatever? Students in school. Yeah. And, and be sent because they don't have, because their small towns probably don't have the infrastructure to, to house yeah. all these like people to have a school program to teach them all English. So there's like, send them to the high school. Send them to the public schools so that way we can teach them English. That's horrible. Mm -hmm. That is horrible because they're taking away from learning and education from your kids. Mm -hmm. This is, again, this is unforeseen consequences of mass migration or asylum seekers. Is now we've got people, people's children, American kids are getting stupider. This is part of the reason why kids are not getting the type of education they need because teachers are having to deal with even more crap that they don't need to deal with. And not just from kids, from adults now. Yeah, I mean, 21 year old. Your senior year, you're 18, 17, or 18. Some kids turn 19 their senior year. But now they're dealing with like 20 year old men being like, hey, you can't do that. And it's like, are you really going to tell a grown ass man that he can't do something? Like, he's going to be like, no. Like, you have no authority over me. I'm an adult. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Like, coming from places, especially as violent as. Haiti right now with their civil war. I mean, remember, there is a civil war happening in Haiti right now, at least yeah. a civil unrest with lots of violence, if you don't want to classify it as a civil war. Yeah. But yeah, that's scary. There should not be 21-year-old migrant men who are not accustomed to our... Again, all cultures are equal, folks. They're not used to our cultures and customs here in America. I mean, they're hooking up... I mean, granted, kids have been hooking up in school for a long time, but... I mean, these aren't kids now. These are adult 20-year-old people hooking up in your, in your schools and trying to hook up with your daughters and stuff now. So, it's scary. Yeah. And unforeseen consequences. Unforeseen yep. consequences. And, like, the origin of when this, like, this horribleness came in, like, is the next thing I'm going to pull up mm -hmm. of your guy that talked about where did uh, these terms just pop up all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. Of racist, homophobic. Mm -hmm. Uh, white privilege, all this stuff. This guy talks about when it came in, and of course, as we've always told people before, it came in during the Obama administration. All of a sudden, this these issues became the most important thing in the world that we had to focus on, and nothing else mm -hmm. mattered. Yeah. Well, let me go ahead and turn this on, and I'll do a quick restart so that way we hear it from the start. Times the word racism was mentioned, and around 2012, it shoots up. Yep. Social justice shoots up. Transgenderism shoots up. White privilege shoots up. This was forced on the American people. Why are we having these conversations now? No, the people did not wake up one day and decide, we want to have a national conversation about chicks with dicks. That didn't happen. This wasn't an organic movement. It was all of the most powerful people decided, this is what we're going to talk about. And why was that? Look, when you're failing on policy, you pivot to a culture. War. Yep. You pit people against yep. each other, so they're fighting each other. Yep. We had in this country, we had an Occupy Wall Street movement where leftists were standing outside of big banks screaming, we are the 99%. Right-wingers had a populist movement called the Tea Party, where yep. they were outraged about the bailouts of big banks, yep. unsustainable debt, government spending. They don't like that. That's not what the powers that be like. Look, they like you fighting about issues like abortion. Now, I'm not saying abortion isn't a very important issue. It's a very important issue. But the, us fighting about that issue doesn't scare anyone at the Federal Reserve. It doesn't scare anyone in the CIA. They don't care if you fight about that issue. They love you fighting over transgender bathrooms. Yep. Track how many times the word yeah. rape. Yeah. Hey, and this happened during, and I can tell you exactly why this happened. This was an election pivot point for Barack Obama because he was not having like the world's best economy at this point. His 2012 was when he got reelected. Yeah. This the, was about time. So that's where I was talking about at the beginning of the show. It's like, Oh, Barack Obama's slow recovery. I mean, we had a very slow recovery. The, con the economy turned around very slow. And you, you as Democrats can be like, that was Bush's fault. That was Bush's fault. It's like, no, these were policies put in by Clinton a long time ago that guaranteed loans. These were Clinton-era policies that guaranteed these home loans for people with sub-optimal mortgages. Yep. And 
you know, they didn't see it coming, but they were just passing these these uh, these guaranteed bank loans off to people who had terrible credit, and then uh, eventually it collapsed, and that's what ended. That's how Bush ended his term, and then Barack Obama kept bailing out all these banks. So again, again, the Tea Party and the ninety nine percent movement were both. Granted, Tim Pool will kind of crap on Dave Smith here and say, "Hey, no, well the 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 ninety nine percent movement was really just full of crazy left wing zealots." Yes, but. The Tea Party movement, I remember being in college when the Tea Party movement was a thing, and I remember people who were Democrats going, the Tea Party people are so dumb, they're so dumb, and it's like, they didn't engage with anything that the Tea Party were talking about with it, like, they'd be like, Which the there's a guy with, there's like a black guy with an AR-15 walking around going, you know, it's like, we, we deserve rights, you know, they go, look how crazy these yeah. people are, it's like, but that's not, they weren't dealing with the substance of what they wanted change there, for. There were a bunch of people that joined the Tea Party movement that weren't really a part of it that just they were wanted to be a part of it like an anti-government like organization but mm -hmm. the whole point of the tea party movement if you go back and rewatch what the tea party movement was about it was about setting term limits for politicians mm -hmm. now politicians who are lifelong politicians literally suck all their organizations and group on the tea party and sent in infiltrators and stuff like that now people will probably argue against me saying that that didn't happen but sent these people in there to be sound crazy, make them look completely insane. The media completely demonized them, saying that they were monsters. Like, all for the main reason of, if you look at their main reason for starting the Tea Party, was to set term limits yeah. for politicians. Well, and here's the other thing, too. It's like, again, this is why I hate Jon Stewart. Like, Jon Stewart is the worst thing that ever happened to political discourse in this country. Jon Stewart was one of the leading people that just made fun of the Tea Partiers left and right. And then they took the... The, the Occupy Wall Street movement seriously, despite the Wall, Occupy Wall Street movement didn't really have any serious positions. Other than they were, the only thing that united them was the, we don't like big banks. And then they were talking about racial justice and equity and, you know, like, no war and stuff like that. Stuff that didn't really relate. Because, again, you have these dumb communists come in and infiltrate these movements and take over... And then it, they make it about everything instead of just one thing. If you can just focus on one issue, like what the Tea Party was trying to do, it's like we want to set term limits and stay on point, you can you can accomplish something. But if you don't do that, guess what? Your movement's not going to go anywhere because we want – what do you want? It's like we want one thing. If you get one thing and you can get that thing accomplished, you win. But if you go, you're at Occupy Wall Street, we want everything. It's like, well, that's not going to happen, so sorry. Yeah. Yep. But – Moving on to kind of what's a similar topic, talking point of what we just talked about, how racism and all this stuff showed up. Getting back to uh, racist events that have been happening, if you've seen, like, the Palestine protests are still kind of happening. They're not nearly as mainstream as they mm -hmm. once were when the fighting first kind of blew up with Israel and Palestine. But this lady literally has her pie-in-the-face moment here where she's ripping down Greek flag, thinking that it's an Israeli flag. So you just watch they have this. no clue what they're protesting for. These people who are pro Palestine, who aren't act, who aren't like Islamic, don't understand what they're protesting for. Yes, they the don't even know the difference between the flag. Remember the Islamists, like the Muslim faith, they all hate each other. Like all the sects hate each other, but they all unite over their hatred of Jews. That's what. They literally they come together. Like, Jews there are and people, America. there are Muslims who would never associate with each other ever, who will unite over their hatred of Jews. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I mean, like if it, it's like the it's the mutant argument from X Men. It's like like El Bolivar Trask from. It's like going, we have a we have a, a fight now. Humanity, like the X Men are that you're not the X Men, but mutants. mutants are that uniting factor that we can unite as people against. But it's 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 that, but it's with that with Muslims against Jews. Yeah, it's like ah. They're the they're the X Men. The Jews are the X Men, and the Muslims are the the racists. Yeah, you know, it's like exactly. we hate we hate them. Well, we, that's the thing. You have to explain things to liberals through superhero logic anymore mm -hmm. because they don't. It's either the only two comparisons that liberals really have for anything anymore is World War Two and superhero movies. Yeah. that's the only two things they really understand mm -hmm. anymore. But yeah, go ahead and play this. I see anti Semites continue to humiliate themselves. And I'm about to come back and put free Palestine too. Free Palestine, bitch. Look, what you looking at? Do you know damn well there's a genocide? Taking this shit down. Take this thing down right here. There's genocide, and I don't stand for it's a Greek Zionism. Flag. At a Greek They're killing children. Down Greek What's the flags purpose? Because Be she proud of your heritage? Star Who's David this? Flag. This is Greeky. What? Everything's new. Yeah. Really? Greeky. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was Israel. My bad. Really? 
Look, it looks like it looks like it's real. I'm not okay. Are you trying to let me look this up right? How are you going to act like the savior of Palestinians but can't even properly identify the flag of the people you hate? Even if it were the right flag, you think acting like a barbaric toddler is going to resolve conflict in the Middle East? And the worst part is that many of the people acting like this have more degrees than the Middle Eastern climate, yet all that academia didn't give you the skills to research before acting like a clown. There you go. Stupid. Must True. I mean, that guy is a... I mean, he hit the nail on the head. Jeez. It, it, these people, again, you are not, you don't actually care about Palestinians. You are just a useful idiot. They're weaponizing your empathy. They're weaponizing your, you know, that's what we're going to, your toxic empathy. They're weaponizing your toxic empathy so you can support a group of people that have been brainwashed into hating Jews since they were children. So it's, it's scary. Scary, scary, scary stuff, man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just justification for evil. Now, getting back to this next one, same thing with the racism going along, that all these issues just popped up around and they've mm -hmm. just been getting blown up ever since. Here is the George Floyd incidents that have just been blowing up and talk about how crime is just getting worse mm -hmm. and worse ever since this. So yeah. check this out. Say his name! Say his name! Say his name! I was a Black Lives Matter activist. I was initially drawn to BLM because the media convinced me that thousands of black people were being shot and killed by racist white police officers. We don't need to say all lives matter because white, white citizens because aren't dying at the hands of police. The growing calls across the nation to defund the police, but will it make our communities safer? Violence is surging. The fiery but mostly peaceful protests made me rethink my perspective. It didn't make sense to me why black rioters would loot and destroy their own communities in the name of racial justice, and why the media only cared about the loss of black life when the perpetrator was white. As I began digging into what's happening in these cities, a tragic and shocking pattern emerged about who the real victims often are, children. When my son was murdered, I thought there would be outrage. We've had an average of about 10 children dying every month from street violence. Everywhere you go, murderers and just getting off. Progressive prosecutors believe crime is not the fault of the perpetrator, so they don't enforce the law. It gotta stop! What the hell are we thinking? If black lives don't matter to us, how in the hell is it supposed to matter to anybody else? Yeah. I mean, there you go. You just got to wake up. You got to see things for as they are, not as the media presents them. The media wants us fighting over racism. They want us fighting over culture war crap. You know, politics is downstream from culture. But like I said, if we're not talking about policy stuff that, again, the reason that we're so inundated with this culture war stuff is because the politicians, you know, this, this is the song and dance. The culture war stuff is the song and dance. The, the politicians are pulling off very corrupt and shady things over here in the background because we're over here talking about the culture war crap. This is why all those cult, all the politicians are millionaires and billionaires now. Because we're so obsessed with the culture war stuff that we're not, we're not watching out on them. We're not watching them making their millions doing un, you know insider trading. They're voting on bills and passing legislation. Man, okay, now I'm going to invest a million in this company that's going to t get this contract that the government's going to give. It's sad. You know, and, and that's the whole thing. Like, George Floyd is just a perfect catalyst for these radicalized black groups to accuse everyone of racism so they can accuse cons all conservatives of racism and be like, hey, 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 you're a racist. And now you're on the back foot and we're like going, no, we're not. We just care about funding the police and keeping our communities safe. And then they are trying to convince you that communities are safer without police. It's gross, it's sad, it's pathetic, and you wonder why your communities are literally burning. You don't have any enforcement mechanisms other than gangs. Mm -hmm. And now you have illegal immigrant gangs you're competing with now. Now there's going to be wars and blood on the street. And whichever gang is willing to do the more evil will be the one that comes out on top. That is very true. Yeah. So what else you got for me, man? Well, we're running really short on time right now mm -hmm. if you haven't checked your watch. Yeah. But uh, I don't know how if you just want to end it with something or because I've still got the 
election interference video right here. The mm -hmm. James O'Keefe. They're letting illegals vote. Yeah, I can't have time for any of those. Those are long. Oh yeah, and then but we could just end it out with uh, this is my favorite right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, we can regards. end it with that. But let's let show me what else you have there too. Well, here's what we got. That's just the funny McDonald's yeah. thing. This we just watched that mm -hmm. one. <laughs> I've had that up for a while yeah. now since we've been talking about George Floyd. Uh, the election interference one right here. James O'Keefe interview with they are bringing in illegal immigrants mm -hmm. to vote and everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, Charlie Kirk interviewing a white dudes for Harris supporter, mm -hmm. and then just this. That's all I got. All right. Left. Yeah, well, let's watch this Charlie Kirk one, and then we'll end it with that after we finish the Charlie Kirk one. All right. Hang on one second here. Now, this is Charlie Kirk. He is at a college campus. He's doing a tour right now where he's talking to young voters, which, is, of course, are college students. Mm -hmm. And uh, he this guy comes up to him with a white dudes for Harris shirt. So, naturally... If he's voting for Kamal Harris, he surely knows the reason why he wants to vote for this lady, like policy reason or whatever. And it's really sad. Like, I mean, it's funny, but at the same time, it's really sad because this is how 90 percent, I'd say 99 percent of Kamal Harris voters wrecked. If you ask them, what's well, a poly position of hers that you like? And they can't give you anything. Yeah. Well, and again, it's the, the sad truth is the only reason they're voting for Kamal is because he's she's not Trump. It's the same weaponization of the media in 2020. Well, we're not voting for Kamal Harris. We're just voting against Trump. Exactly. Exactly. But I'll go ahead and play this. I mean, it's funny, but really sad at the same time. Yeah. We're wearing a white dudes for Harris shirt. Yeah. Okay. What is her greatest accomplishment? Um, being an idol for... Uh... <laughs> so tell me what she has ever done that you think is great, an achievement that she should be president um, <laughs> uh, being vice president. What has she done for you in the last four years to make you view her as an idol? Um, I mean, she's just the vice president. She can't do much, but um, I think just being herself, you know, being a real boss. Why are you voting yeah. for her? Oh, I, just because I said she's an idol for the Democratic Party. She said four years ago she wants to put a tax on unrealized capital gains. Me and Depression. you both know that's not going to happen. So. Well, so, so so, the things that she says she's not going to happen, that's why she's your idol. What is the sales pitch for other white dudes to support Harris, would you say? I would say because she's looking out for us. She's looking out for the country. And uh, she, she's an inspiration. Do you believe that it is a disaster to select someone for the job based on their race and their gender? Um, it depends. Because I'm actually talking about Tim Walz in this case. Oh, An wow. Another white dude for Harris. Yeah. I have to say, he captured white dude for Harris energy perfect. You're wearing a white dude's... Yeah, uh, a good point, Charlie. I mean, that's... Why are you voting for her? What are her policy positions, you know? I want to vote for Trump because I want him to deregulate. I want him to bring back that fiery economy we had under him. Mm -hmm. I want grocery prices to go down. I want energy prices to go down. I want to keep more money in my pocket. That's what I want for every American. So, yeah. Well, I think I'll play it off with uh, this video right here. This is a quip of this, and mm -hmm. then I'll do that little meme of uh, Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. And then we'll sign it off. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and sign it off right here. But, yeah, no, this is the Twins with Owasso Live. This was The Morning Loop. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you two can stay in the loop. That's all we've got for you today. God bless you. See you later, everybody. My line in the sand moment was when I found out that GSA had awarded a contract to a company to transport unaccompanied minors. What was that like for you? It was like someone kicked me in my gut. Once I found out about the contract, I... I after that night, I got on my computer and I started doing a Google search. Action obligation, $40 million. Total contract value, $347 million. But That's over a quarter of a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money to transport unaccompanied children. I mean, this is, a, this is a big money business. And that's why we're sitting here today, because as I shared before, what you know, you cannot unknow. Every single one of them. And not just the men. 
but the women. And the children, too. Every single one of them. And not just the men. But the women. And the children, too. Every